Born in the heartland of Serbia, in Kragujevac on the 28th of October 1882, Dusan Simović's life was destined for greatness. From an early age, he displayed a keen interest in military matters. This passion led him to make a decisive choice, to leave high school and enter the esteemed military academy in Belgrade. Embarking on a path that was to shape the course of his life, Simović immersed himself in the rigours of military training and strategy, earning his stripes as a second lieutenant of artillery in the year 1900. His thirst for knowledge and mastery in his chosen field didn't stop there. By 1905, Simović had completed the higher school of the military academy, marking yet another milestone in his burgeoning military career. These formative years would set the stage for Simović's military prowess and leadership, paving the way for a future filled with the challenges and tribulations of war. As the world was plunged into conflict, so too was Simović, proving his mettle in the Balkan Wars and the First World War. This period of intense turmoil and upheaval marked a significant chapter in Simović's life, playing an instrumental role in shaping him into the accomplished military officer he would become. In the midst of the Balkan Wars between 1912 and 1913, Simović demonstrated exceptional prowess on the battlefield. His strategic brilliance and unwavering courage earned him a well-deserved promotion in 1913. But it was during the First World War, from 1914 to 1918, where Simović truly distinguished himself. Commanding the 7th Infantry Regiment on the Salonika Front, he was promoted once again, this time to Lieutenant Colonel in 1915. Simović, however, was not just a man of war, he possessed a keen interest in the burgeoning field of aviation. He was particularly captivated by the works of flight pioneer Mihailo Petrović, whose detailed reports on the Balkan Wars and insightful studies on aviation deeply resonated with him. Simović saw in aviation not just the future of warfare, but a means to secure his homeland sovereignty. This fascination spurred him to dedicate his career to aviation, marking the start of a new chapter in his life. In 1918, Simović's dedication and service were recognised as he was named among the delegates of the Serbian government and the Joint Chiefs of Staff at the National Council of Slovenese, Croats and Serbs in Zagreb. This marked a significant milestone in his career, cementing his position as a key figure in the military and political landscape of Yugoslavia. Simović's experiences during these turbulent times shaped his vision and approach towards military strategy. His ability to adapt and excel in the face of adversity, coupled with his ambitious pursuit of innovation in aviation, laid the groundwork for his future endeavours. With the end of World War I, Simović had made a name for himself as a distinguished military officer. His leadership, strategic acumen and pioneering interest in aviation would go on to influence his pivotal role in the events leading up to World War II, forever shaping the course of Yugoslav history. The years between World War I and II saw Simović rise to the position of Chief of the General Staff and then Prime Minister of Yugoslavia. In the aftermath of the Great War, Dusan Simović's passion for military aviation took flight. His dedication to this burgeoning field of warfare didn't go unnoticed. And by May of 1938, Simović had ascended to the position of Chief of the General Staff, replacing General Milutin Nedić. This period of Simović's career was marked by his dedication to modernising and strengthening the Royal Yugoslav Army, particularly its Air Force. Simović, however, was not content to remain in the shadows of military command. His ambitions and principles led him to join a group of officers in a daring political manoeuvre. In March of 1941, they orchestrated a coup against the government of Dragisa Cvetković. The success of this coup saw Simović rise to the pinnacle of political power, becoming the Prime Minister of Yugoslavia on the 27th of March, 1941. Yet, Simović's time at the helm would prove to be incredibly brief and fraught with challenges. History had its own script, and it seemed ready to turn the page. On the 6th of April, 1941, the very day of his daughter's wedding, Nazi Germany invaded Yugoslavia. The invasion was swift and brutal. By the 18th of April, 1941, Yugoslavia had surrendered to the Axis powers. Simović, however, refused to capitulate. Alongside his family, he fled Yugoslavia on the 15th of April, 1941, just days before the official surrender. 
It was a dark and uncertain time for the Prime Minister turned refugee. In exile, Simovich continued to play a role in the resistance against the Axis occupation. On his birthday, the 28th of October 1941, he reached out to Draza Mihailovic, the commander of the Chetniks, a Serb nationalist and monarchist resistance movement. His message urged caution, advising Mihailovic to avoid premature actions and reprisals against the occupying forces. As World War II raged on across Europe, Simovic found himself in a precarious position. His homeland was under the rule of foreign powers, his government was in exile, and the very fabric of Yugoslav society was being torn apart by the brutalities of war. As World War II raged on, Simovic's life and career were thrown into turmoil. In the aftermath of World War II, Simovic returned to Belgrade, marking the beginning of his final chapter. After a long and arduous journey through the tumultuous times of war, Dusan Simovic found himself back in his homeland. His return to Belgrade in June 1945 marked a new chapter in his life, a chapter filled with lessons learned from the battlefield and a vision for the future of his beloved country. Simovic was not one to rest on his laurels. He continued to contribute to his nation, to share his wisdom and to influence the course of history. In 1946, he played a significant role as a witness for the prosecution in the trial of Draza Mihailovic. Mihailovic, a fellow officer and compatriot, was a controversial figure in Yugoslav history, and Simovic's testimony was instrumental in shaping the public's understanding of the events that transpired during the war. But Simovic's contributions didn't end with his testimony. He continued to engage with the military and political sphere, using his vast experience and knowledge to enlighten others about military strategy and the importance of a robust defense system. He authored numerous books on military issues, sharing his insights and wisdom with future generations of military strategists and leaders. His works are still regarded as significant contributions to military literature, and his strategic thinking continues to inspire and guide military minds today. Yet, life is not eternal, and in 1962, Dusan Simovic passed away. His death marked the end of an era the end of a life that had witnessed and shaped many pivotal moments in Yugoslav history. But even in death, Simovic's legacy continues to live on. His life's work, his dedication to his country, and his unwavering commitment to its defence are still remembered and respected today. Simovic's story is a testament to his enduring spirit, the spirit of a man who loved his country and dedicated his life to its service. His journey through the Balkan Wars, World War I, the interwar years and World War II was marked by courage, resilience and an unwavering commitment to his beliefs. His life serves as an example for all who aspire to serve their country and make a difference in the world. Simovic's legacy goes beyond his military achievements and his political career. His influence can be seen in the development of Yugoslav military strategy, in the shaping of its defence systems and in the hearts and minds of those who have been inspired by his life and his work. His contributions to his country and his people are a testament to his dedication, his courage and his love for his homeland. Simovic's life was a testament to his dedication to his country and his contributions to its history. His story is a reminder that each one of us has the power to shape history, to make a difference and to leave a lasting legacy. Even as we remember Dusan Simovic, we are reminded of our own potential to contribute to our communities, our countries and our world. The legacy of Dusan Simović lives on in modern Serbia and Yugoslavia. His military strategies and leadership, honed during the Balkan Wars and World War I, have left a lasting imprint. His dedication to the development of aviation, a passion ignited by the works of flight pioneer Mihailo Petrovic, set a precedent for future military advancements in the region. Simović's influence extended beyond the battlefield. His tenure as Prime Minister, albeit brief, marked a pivotal moment in Yugoslav history. His actions during the March 1941 coup demonstrated his unwavering commitment to his country, a trait admired and emulated by many in the years to come. Simovic's impact can also be seen in the realm of literature. His authored books on military issues continue to serve as valuable resources for scholars and military enthusiasts alike, further cementing his role in the history of Serbia and Yugoslavia. From his early days in Kragujevac to his final years in Belgrade, Dusan Simovic left an indelible mark on the history of Serbia and Yugoslavia.